trail running versus road running. Which is better, or is there even a need for the debate? Oh, wrong way. Hello, good morning and welcome to another video and welcome to the Pentlands National Park just outside of Edinburgh here in Scotland. We are going to head up into the hills for some trail running. Well deduced. If you haven't deduced that by this point, I can safely assume you've clicked on the wrong video. Today I am joined by my coach of five years and business partner of two and a half years, Mr. Jonathan Payne. Oh, we're doing that. Hi. Hello. Hi, welcome to us. Yes. And this. I made that awkward enough? I think so. Okay, okay. Yeah, on. yeah, okay, okay. Brief today is actually not largely up to me as I'm jumping into Johnny's training as he is training for something rather zesty. He's actually one out of four down this year and about to head towards number two. And as he is explaining what he's actually training for and what I am jumping into, I'm going to retrieve a gift from the car that I bought him that I was planning on giving him for his birthday in February, but because there is now a camera on and he is here, I'm going to do what everybody does on social media and make it seem like I'm a good guy by giving things to people and having it filmed. <laughs> Probably three months late. Uh, in roughly two and a half weeks' time from when this video goes out, I should be in the jungle in Peru, running uh, roughly 250 kilometers through the canopy, uh, through bugs and crawly things and hot humidity. Uh, what we're going to do today really is just kind of pack me up with uh, a weighted vest and really kind of burn me into the ground a little bit. Everything that we're doing out there is self-sufficient so I have to carry roughly 15 to 20 kilos which should reduce as I eat a lot of it as we go through the process uh, but today I'll have 15 on my back and moving at the pace I hope to in the jungle which now that I say it to you and having said it out loud to him earlier on all sounds like a terrible idea. So this comes off the back of uh, the the Arctic uh, ultra that I've just done, five days self-sufficient through the Arctic, 250 kilometers across the Arctic Circle. The jungle's next, as I've explained. After that, uh, six weeks or so after that, through the Tian Shan Mountains in Kyrgyzstan. Uh, and then after that, round off the year with another 250 kilometers through the desert, uh, the Namib Desert. And even as I'm saying it out loud here, I'm, I'm scared of it, but I'm, I'm looking for a gift coming through. <laughs> and, and that not, all sounds doesn't, horrible, doesn't does not it look just? to me like I'm gonna get this through uh, any of that ultra. This is wicked. So for some context, I'm an absolute simp for Metallica and I've just gone to see them in Amsterdam and I've actually just booked tickets to go and see them in Copenhagen next year and they've done a one-off limited skate deck for their new album 72 Seasons and I saw that and as Johnny Fucking is a me. militant skateboarder, there's a skate or die tattoo right here, I thought, you know what, let's get him this. I love this. <laughs> I didn't know it was going to come out of there, I really jammed. Fucking hell, mate. Thank you very much. And that's why we filmed that. Yeah, beautiful. <laughs> beautiful. So as Johnny mentioned, he is training for an event that requires him to carry a fair amount of weight. So we thought it was only really fair that if I was going to jump in on a training session with him, that I wasn't just running rings around him. So, unfortunately, I too am sporting some weight today. It's been a while since I've done any hill training with a weighted vest on, not since training for Project Vertical in 2020, but I think today's small dosage of weighted training is pale in comparison to 250 kilometers four times in one year with 15 to 20 kilos on your back in four extreme harsh environments. So I think it's probably best that I stop complaining and... We wore the same thing. Yeah. That's gonna get changed. Yeah, I think so, I think so. I think you won the collision. Okay, so to kick things off, it's worth mentioning how we actually as individuals got started in trail running to then break down why we get so much from it and why you can too. But to preface the video, it is worth mentioning that we are purely in these as a specific focus for Johnny's training at the moment. We're filming a video around a training session, so we have these on to mimic the weight he will be using in the jungle, the mountains and the desert, having oh already done so in the Arctic. So we are not recommending do your trail running weighted vests. We actually don't really re recommend doing much running weighted vests at all. No. Just want to get that out of the way. This is for specificity purposes and the photos will look quite cool, but the tendency in the fitness industry to do all running and weighted vests because it's super hardcore and hashtag CrossFit is not something we particularly buy into. So, now that that's out of the way, it is worth, against the background of this beautiful setting, breaking down how we got started in trail running. So Johnny, how did you get started in trail running? Go. Don't know. Uh, I don't, it's one of those that I'm so old now. That, you are. Uh, we joked earlier on that trail running for me used to just be running because I grew up in the country, up north, and if we went for a run, which we did, or went into the mountains, it was just running, just a to run. But having moved away from it 
and moved into heavy drinking. Uh, <laughs> I kind of left it behind. But once I really focused back in on training, I actually did uh, road running quite a lot and just hated it. Just hated it because of the monotony for me. Found the trails and never looked back, literally. I mean, what's more beautiful? than coming in, into this and, and enjoying a training session. So The sun came out as you started talking about this, so that's quite profound. And yeah, I did that. Ultimately, you were my entry point into trail running as well, because when I was training my aerobic base from a strength background, Johnny was programming lists aerobic work in based on time, as we will do with a lot of our athletes Omni Performance. Link is in the description down below. And with that in mind, it was essentially three hours, four hours of list work aerobically and a lower impact way of getting that time in that heart rate zone moving consistently is in settings like this one because as i am slightly heavier body weight than most recreational runners would be it means that my heart rate is something that's more difficult to manage when on inclines so therefore by moving aggressively uphill walking up the hill running the flats running the downs it was a really fun really exciting really engaging really easy way to get three four hours of aerobic work done and in the process of that training, I fall in love with the environment, the process, the focus, the very terrain, and all of the things that we're going to break down today. So we should probably crack on. Okay, so the first benefit that I found comes from trail running from personal experience and from speaking to others is the variance in terrain and how that affects your movement patterns compared to road running. Road running is very monotonous, it's very repetitive, which from a mental stimulation point of view can be quite dull, but also it's very repetitive on your joints in terms of movement patterns. So with very gradients, very terrain, you are moving in a different way, you're more aware of your gait, you're focusing more on the ground so that you don't deck it and graze your knees here. We've just gone from a road over a little bridge onto some rocky trails and that is variety and after all variety is the spice of life my friends. Spice of my wife. Mate, to your point on the monotony and how this changes monotony Another thing that's beautiful, try and get this out while I've still got a bit of breath. The changing environment that you get out here, I don't know if you can see, hopefully you can, exactly what we're looking at and running in. But we're out of the city, we're into the green, we're breathing heavy but we're soaking in some real good air. And this is also a chance for you and I to commune as well, isn't it? And we do. We get a lot of these sessions together that's beyond the training prescription, don't we? Business-wise, but just reconnecting as friends every time. So if there's a cell for trail running, this is it. Bye now. <laughs> Goodbye. Bye now. Bye bye, Jaiba. Very good. <laughs> Very good. <laughs> okay, so another important consideration is how humbling trails can be, how humbling hills can be, because ego is the enemy, my friends, and there is nothing that's going to punch your ego right in the gizzard. I was hoping you'd come up with something there. That's yeah, what the polls are for. Thank you. Thank you, yeah. everyone. Yes. Like trails. And that is because the gradient obviously affects pace. And what we have a lot of as society is expectations on a 5K, a 10K, a half marathon, a marathon on road in perfect conditions. What times and paces should be attached to that? When you go out onto trails, this trail will be different to the trail you've got access to. We're very fortunate to have this. Yeah. But as I mentioned earlier, for those that are maybe hybrid training, come from a heavier background, or wanting to build their aerobic capacity, the pace we're currently moving at is gonna be knocking on the door of our zone two, which means that we are building our aerobic base without the impact of road running, not having any societal expectations or prerequisites on how fast we think we should be moving, and it allows us to just enjoy being outside, building our aerobic base, which is ultimately the foundation of all fitness, and in turn, Eroding that ego a little bit, which we all know can sometimes hold us back somewhat. Yes. Now everybody take a moment to reflect so that I can get myself some air and just ponder on their own egos. For reference, this is one of the steepest parts of this whole section in the Pentlands. Johnny and I have very rarely been able to full send it up here without being gasping for air at the top. So we're gonna walk it, we're in vest. Johnny's gonna be walking on certain sections of the jungle. So this is specific training for us today. But if you see somebody running trails or you see somebody walking trails and then running the flats, everybody's having a good time. And the whole division between road runners and trail runners online and the strange amount of gatekeeping that goes on is not something we buy into. We want you to enjoy your training. And we think this is a fantastic way to enjoy it whilst also abandoning the ego. Run.
I think at this point it's important to mention how you guys watching might be able to incorporate some trail running into your training split, routine, programming, whatever you want to call it. The most important thing from the off is your goals. We always say that intentional training is the most important thing, you'll have heard that elsewhere. But when it comes to hybrid training, which is our specialty, we firmly believe that you should be working towards specific things in concurrent disciplines. Yeah. So largely the boring answer here is it depends on what you're training for. But in terms of general prescriptions, Johnny, far away. I think general prescriptions, if you if you're looking to change up and get into the trails, the simple thing to do is find somewhere to go first. I mean, that sounds slightly outside prescription. Some people live in the city and, and things like this they don't have access to. So just finding some parks, some green space in the city is fine. And, and actually maneuvering or moving rather on that kind of surface. And I would say for the first month or so, a session a week, getting used to that environment and just finding how you move in it, because your gait will be different, uh, how you react, as we said earlier on, the agility and the movement will be different. And, you know, a session a week, but keep it, keep it light, keep it zone two, keep it, you know, somewhere where you can still talk while you breathe. So yeah, breathe. Co co conversational pace. If you know what your zone yeah. two heart rate zone is, then stick within that. If you don't, and you're working off an Apple Watch or you've got no data, then just simply, if you can maintain ten words as you're yeah. continuing continuing to run, then that's a great pace yeah, to do well, that. You, you've got your thing on, and, and you could look at that and tell me your heart rate. But I could tell your heart rate. Uh, just by whether or not you can continue that conversation with me. If you have to stop and do that kind of thing, you're moving too fast. I think if you can stay within that for a month or so, a session a week, 20, 30 minutes, get used to that environment, and then from there within within the body of your program. The main thing is, dip your toe in, start, start steadily and build upwards, as with everything. But most importantly, see if you enjoy it. Yeah. We get a lot from it, but that doesn't mean that you necessarily will. We firmly believe there's value in it, but I think so, yeah. we're not all the same. That's something with this channel we always want to be very specific on, is what works for I might not work for you. What works for you might not work for you, and what works for you might not work for everyone else. So don't be a zealot, Dip but try in. new things. Dip your toe in, don't jump in at the deep end. Take your time. Unless you're Michael Phelps, in which case you'll probably be okay. Yeah. I bet he's a shit trail runner. We can ask Dan. Dan Wallace. If anyone wants to listen to some insights on the Omnia Performance Podcast from somebody that has actually swam against Michael Phelps that grew up over there then the links are in the description down below and the YouTube link will be somewhere on the screen for you now. Okay, goodbye. One of the key things to recognize is the specificity in training. Whilst we describe the differences between uh, road running and trail running, uh, and we talked about the gradient and managing your ego, etc. There is some specificity in, in adaption too. I think uh, it's fair to say at the moment, we're in the vests, we're training really for my outcome today, and this is the kind of stuff I've been doing more recently. Also fair to say that uh, given the nature of your goals, you've been doing a lot more road running, etc. So if we're out on the road just now, and we sent it, I think I'd get left for dust quite rightly. Whereas right now, I'd probably get left for dust if we sent it here. So that's exactly what we're gonna do. We're gonna have a race, three, Two, one, go. Hanging. Are you? As expected, specificity wins. I'd fucking smoke you on some roads. Don't do that. Or a track goodbye. <laughs> it's really hard to tell the gradient that we're on there. Easily 12 degrees, I think. Maybe more. And as Fergus has just said, I know I'd be left behind. I know that. Uh, where we to run the road together. His pacing and his capability of kind of managing that pace is better than mine, much more specifically managed. Whereas finding the ability to push, my uh, heart rate's come down a good bit faster uh, and I could probably do another one out again. Uh, and that's only specificity in there, but the also the weight. It's the weight, I haven't done anything with weight for over a year now. Yeah, and I've been on these mountains for the past six months carrying weight, so. Oh, I can taste blood. <laughs> oh. oh no. So anyway, a point well proven I'd say. But it's important to mention as well that we're very realistic and understand 
the reality that is training is a very black and white way of progressing in your day-to-day -day life and that's where I think it's really important to acknowledge specificity because Johnny's been training for this so therefore he's earned the right to smoke me in the same way that on a track on the roads at the moment I've earned the right to smoke him yeah, yeah. that doesn't mean that either one of us is better than the other or competitive in that sense but just that set your goals get a plan, work towards them, acknowledge that specificity is king, crack on, have a good time, try not fall off the edge of a mountain, get your breath back, off we go up to the summit. Thank you very much. Goodbye. My legs just blew up, like lactic, just raw. Where did you feel it? Like, Apart from in the second. <laughs> in my existential sense of dread. <laughs> so once we got to the, once we got to that little ramp up bit, there a little bit where I just, I just felt the weight in my legs. It was just like yeah. lactic shut off. These are horrible well, and shit as well. Breathe you either. can't it's breathe in these. Heavy. Running in weighted vests is stupid. We only did this because it looked cool for a photo. If we'd had it our way, we'd have both been in packs with weights in it. Yeah. But more fool us. At least the photos look good, don't they? <laughs> running versus road running. In conclusion, neither one is better than the other. They are both different things. It is like comparing apples and oranges, but both apples and oranges are delicious and have separate biomechanical and physiological advantages. We have brought some points to life that are important to us today. There might be some things that we've missed. There might be some things that you want us to elaborate on. There might be some things that you want to chime in with in the comments down below. However, if you decide to try and gatekeep and think that you are the person that decides what trail running is or what road running is or what time warrants what or what gradient you are allowed to walk at or run at to be put into an arbitrary box that you have decided i'm not interested in hearing it because all we want to focus on is people trying new things and enjoying the process broadening what they're training for learning more about themselves and we take a huge amount of value from being in settings like this one and that's kind of what we really wanted this video to be about isn't it johnny it is yep ultimately find out uh, what floats your boat get out there have fun be safe and uh, yeah try new things Speaking of floating boats, and the vast majority of people listening will feel that their boat is very much sunk at the thought of taking on what you're about to take on, how are you feeling overall about going into the jungle? Right this second? Uh, yeah. I'd rather, I'd rather be here, I think, right this second. I'm nervous, uh, but in a good way. Uh, that kind of trepidation, that anxious excitement is kicking in now. We're two and a, I think when this video goes out, we'll be about two weeks out, um, <laughs> by which point I'll be climbing the walls. But there's, there's unknowns, isn't there, mate? I mean, it's like, uh, it's like anybody looking in on this video and we're talking about go outside, find somewhere green, find somewhere new, try something new. I've, I've never been in that environment, never operated, so I don't quite know what to expect. You can't, you can't you can't really mimic that. Hu hu it's the humidity, isn't it? It's humidity. But you're, you're in saunas, 30 to 40 minutes in the sauna at Ballantines and Fife. Oh, mate, mate, that's horrendous. That's horrendous. So uh, if anybody can do that, if you can sit 40 minutes in, in a sauna, you can do anything. I, I, I'm not sure that's true. No. Don't fact check us on that one. Hashtag Trump. But nonetheless, <laughs> that is today's video. We hope you've enjoyed it. Please do like the video, comment down below. Check Johnny out on Instagram. It is just here. Ding, sound effect. And smile from Johnny. Most importantly, we are rounding off the video here as we actually have some training to get on with. And no matter how many times we say it, we will still try and make a training session and a video work simultaneously, even though we have learned countless times that they need to be entirely separate. So at this point, we are drawing a line, creating that separation and getting on with what we're here for, first and foremost, which is training. Get out of here.